I'm Jay Fidel with this Think Tech commentary. The First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution includes the Establishment Clause, which calls for the separation of church and state. The future of the clause became a matter of concern when George W. Bush announced at his inauguration that he wanted to support faith-based organizations. Then he went on to switch the focus of the Department of Justice from preserving the separation of church and state to the protection of the rights of churches. That was a remarkable and profound change. Over recent years, the church has become more and more active in the political process, and through dint of those efforts has become more and more influential in imposing its religious views on others, and in the process, enhancing its power in the community. At the same time, the church enjoys an unconditional tax exemption. We might have thought the quid pro quo for that exemption is that the church should stay out of politics, but that simply has not been the case. This puts the public at large, which has to pay all kinds of taxes, at a serious disadvantage in opposing or responding to the church's lobbying efforts. Clearly, the founders did not intend it that way. The Establishment Clause has been seriously weakened since that auspicious inaugural. We might have thought that things would go back to the way they were before the Bush administration, but it hasn't worked out that way. The country has changed. We are now in a place where religion has more money and leverage than ever before. It's not what the founders wanted, but it's the reality. Fast forward to the 2016 campaign. The Republican Party has gone right-wing conservative, and that includes religious conservatism by which people can impose their religious beliefs and practices on others. That's a big problem, because the reason for the clause in the first place was to prevent any religious group from imposing its religion on others, as had happened in Europe. Hawaii has many churches and many religions. Some of those churches enjoy extraordinary influence in our community. Did you know there were regular prayer meetings in the state capitol building during the Lingle administration? Did you think the legislators who were invited were troubled about the separation of church and state? Were you? Does it bother you that they prayed for their religion and to their God in the heart of our state capitol? A building built and operated with our tax money. A building sanctified not to religion, but to making the laws that govern us. Now fast forward to just a few weeks ago, when Ernie Martin, the chair of the city council, tried to put through a bill that would have given one born-again church in our community, the New Hope Chapel, a gift in the amount of $250,000. This, of course, would have come out of our taxes, yours and mine. What is worse is that New Hope actively lobbies on religious issues. Fortunately, Martin was face down on it, and it never passed. What is troubling is that Martin is the chair of the city council. Did he not know about the Establishment Clause? Did he not understand the separation of church and state? You don't take taxpayer money and give it to a church to advance religious doctrine. The ongoing erosion of this, the first bill of our Bill of Rights, has to stop. We cannot afford to forget the Establishment Clause, because to do so is to forget about religious freedom, a freedom on which our country is based. The way to good government and to a sustainable republic is not through the edicts or influences of a church, any church. Government must be secular, and we must keep it that way. <laughs>